I'm Dr. John Gartner. And I'm Dr. Harry Siegel. And welcome to this preview of Shrinking Trump. John and I are both clinical psychologists, and for the past four months, we've been having this weekly podcast to talk about what we see as the inherent danger, not only of, of Donald Trump's severe personality disorder, but also signs of incipient dementia, which suggests to us that he is not fit to be president. We're not the only ones, and in fact, George Conway and the Lincoln Project have also been taking to the air to talk about Trump's dangerously impaired mental health. And in fact, as we announced last week, John, John has been involved with George Conway's work. And I'm proud to let people know our PSYOP is working. We've been talking about how George Conway's anti-psychopac and also the Lincoln Project have been micro-beaming um, their commercials, their provocative commercials into Mar-a-Lago and into Bedminster. Um, and so um, I, had, I actually mentioned this with regard to George. I had not mentioned it with regard to the Lincoln Project because some people brought it up, but it's true. The Lincoln Project has been doing it also. I did mention that to George. And actually, he said that he did give Rick Wilson the idea, just for the record, um, <laughs> because he said, and this is interesting, you know, remember, George has seen Trump up close. His wife was his campaign manager. So he really has had a very intimate view of Trump. And he said, I've just had this theory for all these years that we can provoke him into betraying betraying himself and displaying himself because he is so easily provoked like a, a little three-year-old bully. Um, so more proof that it's working. Trump's lawyer sent a cease and desist letter to the Lincoln Project threatening to sue them if they didn't stop beaming their commercials into his club. <laughs> Here is the Lincoln Project's response. The Donald Trump for President campaign hit a bunch of people this afternoon with cease and desist letters because our ads were too mean for little dog. Again, Donald. Poor little baby dog got very upset because our ads were mean to him. This is the third time you've threatened to sue the Lincoln Project. They should call it the Losers Project. This time it's because we told you the truth about how your campaign was failing, broken, and dead in the water. Wrong that you have the race sewn up. Donald. We told you Chris and Susie made a mistake when they bragged that Biden would stay in the race. It's embarrassing, Donald. Your whole campaign is a hot mess. You're terrible on camera these days. You just look old, tired, and f***ing crazy. The late great Hannibal Lecter. America's just done with you, Donald. And with the political team you have, wow, wow. there's nothing you can do but lose, lose, lose. It's not fair. They're so mean. I love it. It, it. It's and it's interesting because what Kamala Harris does when she's attacked, really even more viciously. If you ask me, she's been attacked on race. She calls her stupid. He calls her garbage. Um, she just shrugs and says, "Well, that's undignified." But you see, right. Trump can't respond that way. He, he has can't to not react. react. He and has guess to what. He has to react. And so that's something you can count on, right? In some no. sort of martial art, right? If you can get your opponent to react <laughs> and you know you can do it, right? Then he betrays himself. Then he he, he reveals himself. And, and, and then he's off balance. And then he's on defense. And that's exactly what's happened. But you know, one of the things I'm so excited about is it's not just George Conway. It's not just the Lincoln Project. Guess who else has discovered the value of this strategy? the Kamala Harris campaign. Let's look at, they have done brilliantly with their social media and they have gotten the message that this works. Let's see uh, the latest uh, quote tweet of Trump's post. So Donald Trump posted, we had to turn away lots of people yesterday in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, but comrade Kamala Harris's social media operation showed empty seats long before the rally started early in the afternoon when in actuality we had to turn away 11,500 people. But Kamala HQ re reposted that and they said, no, Donald, we posted a video of your empty rally while you were speaking. Americans are tired of your lies and slur-filled delusions. 
it's getting old. Because remember, he's so sensitive about his crowd size. And they added, they included a video. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you New York, Blue County, PA, who are you going to believe? Your your lying eyes, John. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who are you going to believe, the liar or your lying eyes? <laughs> so you know, but but look at how quick they are. Okay, to, how deft they are. All right, they post something making fun of his crowd size. He posts something. Oh, they're lying. Uh, that was in the stadium before I even got there. And they go, No, no, Donnie. That was when you were talking and everyone was leaving. Here is the video. And so. They're getting under his skin. He has, as we've talked about, severe crowd size envy, okay? Cre severe crowd size anxiety that we believe has actually morphed into crowd size delusion. So we're pushing him further and further into his um, uh, disturbance about his crowd size inferiority. But you know what? Guess who else is teasing him about his crowd size? Even some of the people that you normally expect to go high there's the childish nicknames, the crazy conspiracy theories, this weird obsession with crowd sizes. It, it, you see what he did there? Uh, it's just... Yeah. Um, yeah, by the way, by the way some we, people are only listening here. I just want to, for the people who are only listening, uh, I, I just, yes, because yes. the visual is so important, right? Uh, while Obama was talking about his obsession with crowd size, he, he held his hands together, right? And then, and then brought them closer together, right? To indicate a, a small, weenie uh, kind of crowd. And, and actually, it's, it's a move that Trump makes a lot when he's speaking. With his hands, that's right. He's also making fun of him. By the way, what a pleasure it was to hear Obama give a speech again. And I really... I, I believe a really profound one, but you're right, John. They're they're not going. They're not going high. <laughs> they're going right at him. <laughs> That's right. Well, yeah. Rather than going high, I prefer to follow my um, my model, Winston Churchill, who said, "We'll fight them in the beaches. We'll fight them in the streets. I mean, we'll we'll fight them wherever they are." <laughs> is the point? Mm, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Well, speaking about crowd size, some of our uh, viewers have sent us in some cartoons that I just wanted to show. So here's oh. let, let's look at the first one. So for those of you who are just listening, there's a big Trump plane and there's a huge crowd outside of the airplane. And they go, wow, what a crowd. Kamala can't compete. But then someone else says, should we tell him those are the mental health professionals? <laughs> I like that. Thanks. And then, Whoever sent that in. I, I'm, I would give them credit, but I honestly can't remember. But I do remember that the second one was sent in by a high school friend of mine, Ann Kaplan, who also was the head of Duty to Warn New York uh, many years ago. So she really wanted us to put this on the show, but uh, she didn't have to sell it. It's really a good one. Let's look at this. Now, for those of you who are just watching, who are just listening, it, Trump is on an analyst couch and there's a Freudian looking analyst behind him. And the analyst is saying to Trump, these very large crowds, are they in the room with us right now? <laughs> you know, one thing I, 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 I love it. I, I just want to make one point about this because um, it's not just that Trump reveals who he is if you attack him in this way. He does. He gets reactive. But I don't know if any of you uh, out there have, have played chess. I, don't, I, I think I worked at it for a year or two when I was in graduate school. I'm no chess player. But one of the things about chess that's so important is something called tempo. That is, you always have to be keeping the other player off balance. Yes. If you give the player a chance to respond and then put you off balance, they have the tempo, right? And so what the Lincoln Project and, and George Conway's anti-psycho pack is doing is giving tempo to Kamala Harris. And they're jumping on it. So they're, mm -hmm. they're just pushing him back and pushing him back. As long as he's reacting, he's losing. Right. All right. So that's your glimpse of our show. If you want to watch the whole thing, and I encourage you to, go to the Really American Network and uh, find us. We're called Shrinking Trump, and we hope to see you there.